thing that I really like about the Model 3 is the hand link. It feels super, super good on the road. Now, the center of gravity on this car is extremely low because the battery pack is just like a skateboard right along the floor. And that's where all the weight is, basically. So your center of gravity is extremely low, it's extremely balanced, which means that you get a very even tire balancing, which means that, you know, there's not one tire that's having to do more work than the other, you know, left, right, front, back. It's just finely tuned, finely balanced. The suspension is very, very good. Um, it feels like it really is hugging the road. Um, and you can really tell when you're, you know, whipping it around corners. There's almost no body roll, and the all four tires remain very happily uh, grounded on the road. It feels like you're on rails. What about chill versus standard driving mode? So this just affects your acceleration, basically how much torque you can output to the motors. With standard, you can output all the torque right away. If you want, you can do that kind of acceleration and get up to speed very quickly. If I were to switch it over to chill, which I'll do right now, this feels a lot more comfortable. It's a lot more uh, relaxed. So if I floor it, you do get a nice assertive acceleration, um, but you don't get all the torque right away. So this is a lot more similar to um, an internal combustion engine. Basically all electric cars have what's called instant torque. Because you're not relying on explosions inside of a cylinder which turn a uh, crankshaft, which you know in turn turn some pulleys and some belts, um, which finally go to the drive shaft, which finally goes to the wheels and goes to the tires and goes to the road. It's just magnets, right? You're just flowing electrons through a coil um, which pulls on a magnet and that's what propulses you forward. Because you can turn it on like that, you can really make um, the car move exactly when you want to. There's no revving, there's no buildup, it's just exactly what your foot is doing is the output that you get. So right now we're headed to Amesbury um, and I haven't entered any kind of navigation and I'm already on the road. So let's say that I don't know exactly where I'm going, right? I just know the general town name. I can say navigate to Amesbury and, and it sets me on my way. So I know that I'm going at least the right way on the highway, which is quite nice. Um, but let's say now, you know, someone finally calls me and they say, oh, you need to go to this certain uh, address. Okay, well that's no problem. All I have to do is navigate to 3 Main Street, Amesbury. And just like that, it changes my navigation point to exactly where I wanna go. All right, so if I wanna go into autopilot, um, I double push down on the driving stock, and you'll hear it turn on, that, that uh, sort of airplane chime, means that autopilot is now on and running. And so basically, I can sort of relax a bit, um, I generally keep my hands on the wheel just to make sure that everything is going well. It now maintains my spacing in the lane and it makes sure that there is a distance between me and the car in front of me so it'll slow down, speed up, and turn for me. I can adjust a lot of what Autopilot is doing just by using the right thumb wheel. So the right thumb wheel will allow me to speed up the car. So I'll, I'll increase it here and had to go up by five. So you scroll up fast and then you, you increase by five um, I can decrease, say, by one, just by doing one click at a time, and that'll slow us down. Another thing I can do is change the distance between the car in front of me. So I will speed up, so that way I am following the car in front of me. And now I, what I can do is adjust the, that distance. So if I want to, I can back off a little bit. And I used the scroll wheel to, to uh, sort of change that distance. I can, I can push it to the right which puts me nice and close to the car in front of me, just two car lengths, um, and I sort of work my way up. But now this says the speed limit here is 65, and yet it's letting us go 80. I thought that we had set that to a zero speed limit overage. Right, when the car is on a highway, it allows you to go to whatever speed you dictate. That is super helpful because, you know, on a highway, people go over the speed limit. That's just sort of what happens, at least in America. So tell us the, the different ways to go out of autopilot. Okay, so you can either hit the brake and immediately drop autopilot. Now I'm driving the car completely manually. Um, I'll put it back in. Another way to get out of just auto steer 
is to pull the wheel out of alignment. But that's still blue. So traffic aware cruise control is still active, which means that it, it'll still maintain that distance between the car in front of me. Here's the last way to get out of autopilot. Probably the scariest for most people is to push up on the stock. Now you push it just one click, just very gently. Tell us why you don't like that. So I don't like it either. The reason that uh, most people don't like it is that if you go up two clicks, you'll go into neutral, which I'm not going to do here because we're on the road. And we've done it before. And right. I mean, there's nothing scary about it other than you're just you're coasting. Right. So because you're in neutral, you're not going to be regenerative braking and you're not going to be um, accelerating. So for a minute, it's going to feel completely fine because the car is going to continue coasting. It's very, it, it's very aerodynamic, so it's going to maintain its speed. Um, as soon as as you hit the the accelerator, or nothing will happen. Nothing will happen, and that's sort of when you're going to be clued in to the fact that it is in neutral. So, if you're traveling somewhere and you don't have enough range to get there, uh, at least so it says, there are a bunch of different things that you can do. One of them is to limit your speed. The equation for drag is very, very dependent on speed because basically it's the square of your speed, the square of your velocity um, that determines drag more than anything else. I mean, obviously it's your surface area, but you know, you can't go hacking parts off of your car. Um, but the one thing you can do is to limit your speed. So limiting your speed is a really big thing. So another thing you can do is to draft behind trucks. So you may have seen a Mythbusters where they actually, you know, put this to the test. Um, in, an, in an internal combustion engine car and you know it is like 20% more efficient at you know quite a, a, a distance from the truck um, and that's absolutely true so if you want to save yourself some range you can just get behind a truck and put it in autopilot you can adjust to try and get as close as you can to the truck you know, and that's one of the ways that you can try and, without changing your speed, try and increase efficiency. So the last tip I have is mostly for back roads. On back roads, you're not typically going to be moving fast enough where going slower is going to make any appreciable difference to your range. But the, the biggest thing is your acceleration. So put it into chill mode, and what that will do is it will limit how much you're going to be accelerating. Because the more you accelerate, it's not the most efficient way to accelerate as fast as possible. Nice, slow acceleration or what you're looking for. And this goes for braking as well. The regenerative braking on this car means that when you're slowing down, you're actually putting more energy into the battery pack. All that energy that you used to accelerate yourself is now able to actually put back into the battery, um, which means that you can drive for longer and longer. Now typically when we're driving someplace, this is a really handy thing right here. It tells you what uh, energy you're gonna have in the battery when you get there, so 54%, and what energy you're gonna have when you get back to where you started, 41%. Yep. So that's a really good indicator in your mind of like, is that cutting it too close? Or are we doing just fine? Yep. And what we found since we got the long range Model 3 is that you don't really have to worry about it for most of your trips like you used to even in Sparky with the 250 mile range right having all that extra range is just fantastic but if you are a little bit concerned if you think you're gonna get too low then you can start looking for chargers and you can do this while you're driving so it's pretty easy you tap the screen and then you hit this charge button right here and what that's gonna do is it's gonna call up all the superchargers and all the destination chargers that are around you as you can see these little letters are those different destination chargers in gray, and these red ones are the superchargers in red. So as I'm driving along, let's say I wanna to listen to some music, um, I could hit the music button here and pull up, let's listen to some Billy Joel. Um, but let's say that I, you know, I'm a cautious driver, I don't wanna do that. Um, I can use just my hands on the wheel to do all the entertainment. So just like you can do all of your autopilot um, from the right thumb wheel, you can do all of your entertainment from the left thumb wheel. So play is just a, a click. I can also increase the volume using up on the left thumb wheel, down, obviously down, and then I can skip songs by pushing right or left. So if I wanted to listen to the radio, I would just name a radio station that I wanted to listen to. So I'd hit the right thumb scroll wheel and then just say, play WBUR. And so it would switch over to the radio. So 
what does it feel like to not have a binnacle in front of you? So for those of you who don't know, the binnacle is uh, you know having your speed right there uh, in between the steering wheel. Model 3 obviously doesn't have a tachometer because it doesn't have an engine that, that revs. You can see your energy usage uh, as a small underline there, but it's all shifted over to the right. So having it shifted over to the right, uh, some people think that it's going to be the end of the world, that it's going to ruin them, that they're never going to be able to know what the speed limit is. Um, it's honestly just a few degrees to the right as opposed to the binnacle. Now, there is a huge advantage that I don't think gets talked about. Having no binnacle means that when you're adjusting your steering wheel, you can adjust it to whatever is most comfortable. You don't have to adjust to whatever is the most visible. If you were adjusting to a binnacle, you have to make sure that the steering wheel isn't too high and too low to block some of your instrument cluster. And that can be annoying because you might want the wheel lower, but now you can't see the speed. Having it here means that there's nothing I can do to the steering wheel that will block my view of the speedometer. This meter here shows me how much energy I am spending or how much energy I'm getting back. So the, it's sort of a two-way street here because um, when it's green, I'm regenerative braking, and when it's black, I'm using energy. So I'm, I'm accelerating or I'm braking. Um, and this is really helpful if you were trying to coast. You can try and like get it as close to nothing as possible. That's more of like a coast where the, the, the motor is not receiving or giving any energy. It's also just a nice little visual to know, you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm giving a little too much juice or uh, wow, I'm really getting a lot of energy back into my battery. Can we talk about the windshield wipers? So I know it's a sunny day, we don't need them, but if we were driving along and it started to rain, um, I've heard people say, oh, you gotta get into all these menus to find the windshield wipers. Is that true? Right, uh, no, it's not true. Basically, there's two different ways to get into the windshield wipers very quickly. Uh, the first would be to press the windshield wiper button, which is right there. It's basically always right there. So if you ever need the windshield wipers, you, you would hit that button. Now, the other thing you can do is to just wipe the windshield. Now, let's say for whatever reason, it just started pouring rain for no apparent reason. We weren't expecting it or anything like that. So I, I didn't have time to press this. I need to wipe the windscreen immediately. On the left stock, all I have to do is a light press and it will do one sweep of the windshield and it will also bring up the menu. So if, I, if, I, if it starts raining, I click it once, it windshield wipes. Now I can turn on my windshield wipers if I want them on. I could turn them off. I can increase the speed so you can see the speed here. We could go to very fast if we want to. I'm going to shut them off so we don't damage the blades. And there's auto. What's auto do? So the auto windshield wipers, you can keep on actually all the time. They'll just be waiting to see rain. It knows when it's raining um, and it'll turn on the windshield wipers when you need it. It's not always perfect, but it might be better than nothing, um, especially if it, you know, you just happen to turn a corner into a giant rainstorm. Do a windshield wash. Okay. And so you do that by pushing in hard on the button on the left. Right. And look at the, the windshield wiper fluid comes out of the windshield, windshield wiper. wipers. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see. So leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.